Hello boys and girls. This video tells you what to expect in a Latin common entrance paper. I am going to walk you through a level 1 paper, but the level 2 and level 3 papers are set out in more or less the same way. I'll offer some basic hints on exam technique as we go through, but your teachers will give you further guidance. They do know what they are talking about, so do pay attention to their advice. Now I know that some of you are old hands at this, but for those who aren't, this is what a common entrance Latin paper looks like. This is the January 2020 paper. It's a 12 page booklet containing the questions and plenty of room for your answers. A great feature of the Latin common entrance paper is its predictability. It's always set out the same way, so there'll be no surprises for you as far as the layout goes. It consists of four questions, three based on language and the fourth on non-linguistic topics. Beware of spending too much time on these. The teachers at your next school want to find out whether you know how your Latin nouns and verbs work and won't be that fussed about whether you know all about gladiators or the Trojan War. So, I'll lay out this paper on my desk so we can see the big picture and we'll switch back and forth between there and close-up shots to focus in on the details. Right, question one covers pages two and three. It's the comprehension question, which is worth 15 marks. This is the easiest part of the paper and is basically concerned with vocab spotting. It consists of a short passage of Latin, which you have to study and make sense of. You don't have to write out a translation of it. The story of the passage will be based on something from classical history or mythology. So if you're in luck, the storyline may be familiar to you already. This Latin passage is followed by questions which quote the Latin words where you'll find the answers. Your answers do not have to be in full English sentences, so keep them short. If the marking scheme on the right indicates a single mark, you probably only need to write down a single word. Always use this marking scheme as a guide to how long the length of your answer ought to be. Question 2 will cover pages 4 and 5. This is the translation question worth 30 marks. The Latin storyline of the comprehension passage continues. You have to translate the passage into sensible English. You should write your answers on alternate lines. There is plenty of room for you to do this and you will irritate your examiner. Never a good idea if you don't. One hint is to take a pencil and add a dot at the start of every other line to remind you. This is the most valuable part of the paper, so do spend time on it. Do not leave gaps. Remember that Latin word order is not the same as English. Most of the verbs will come at the end of the sentence, but must be moved forwards when translating into English. This is a key point which many young learners find very hard to grasp and get caught out on time after time. Question 3 is spread over pages 6 and 7. It's the grammar section worth 20 marks. The Latin story continues to its conclusion. You do not have to translate it. You have to answer grammar questions based on it. And then you have to show you can manipulate aspects of the language at a basic level. This is usually the worst done part of the paper. So do some revision and make sure especially that you know the meaning of basic grammatical terms like case, tense, gender, number, that sort of thing. Question 4 on page 8 consists of the background topics and is worth 10 marks. This is based, as you can see, on non-linguistic work. You will have to make a choice and answer one of the two questions in the section of the syllabus you have been studying. Here again, the layout is predictable. If you've studied domestic life, you must answer questions 4a or 4b. If you've studied the city of Rome, you must choose between 4c and 4d. 
If you've studied the army and Roman Britain, you must choose between 4E and 4F. And if you've studied Greek mythology, your decision has got to be between 4G and 4H. It's the same every year. As you can see, there are two parts to each question. Part 1, worth 8 marks, is a factual question, just asking you for information. Part 2, for just 2 marks, asks for you to think about and give your opinion on some aspect of the story or something you have mentioned in your answer to Part 1. So, that's it. The marks for the four sections add up to 75, and your next score will probably get back to you with a numerical percentage score or an alphabetical grade. Good luck. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.